hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new to my channel hello and welcome to my channel my name is summer so in this video i want to speak about the return of uh, stephanie otobo for any of you that do not know about it stephanie otobo has resurfaced you know people have a little comment and say ah you don't you're weary you don't run mad she's already passed on and stuff like that first thing first i want to say is this this girl we have seen i personally believe that this girl has enough stubbornness she is stubborn. When I say stubborn, I mean stubborn to fight. Do you know what I mean? She, she has enough stubbornness to last her a lifetime. To always be a problem for, for Suleiman. She has it. I, I see it in her. I, I, from what I have seen, Suleiman does not like people that are stubborn. When it comes to answering him back, ready to answer him back, ready to speak their mind regardless and stuff like that. Because from the audio we which he has confirmed that it is his voice where he told the lady that you know i am a very dangerous person i make uh, i can make you disappear and he said that is what i don't like about you so so and so and so and uh, you don't talk to men like that or you don't talk to men there was a way he was it shows that he's not someone that is used to someone that people that answer him back people that are stubborn enough to be persistent stubborn enough to answer him back and then there was another video where Stephanie Otobo was saying that uh, he said that he was dating one Nigerian, you know, anyways, that woman is a grandmother. Ngozi is on, yes, I think that's the name of the Nigerian actress. And, uh, you know, maybe I said that would be a separate video. I don't like when my one video is too long. But uh, Stephanie Otobo said that he told her that, oh, I like her. She doesn't give me wahala. She doesn't, whatever. She doesn't give me stress. She's very peaceful, blah, blah, blah. It shows that he is a man that prefers women that don't answer back, don't question him, are not stubborn. People, he doesn't want a woman that is like him. Because he himself is a stubborn man himself. And that stubbornness is why I personally do not believe that Stephanie Otobo will ever go away. Until she gets justice. Whatever her definition of justice is. And the truth is this. I feel like the only thing she does not have is the right strategy and the right support. From the interview she granted, I'll put a link, you guys can check it out. She, the new, new video, you can hear that she chickened out because of the pressure. Nigerians all pounds, or well, not all Nigerians, but there was so much people coming for her because, oh, she's a stripper, but he is a man of God. So many people came for her that spoke against her and stuff like that and didn't believe her story. I think it became so overwhelming for her. She talked about the court case where she kept on coming and coming. She got worn out and that was why she backed off. All it takes is for her to have the right people. For example, if she mistakenly, let me use that word mistakenly, let's say she got married to maybe a Westerner that has, because you see why I say Westerner, a lot of our Nigerian people believe in all this, my mama say, my papa say, uh, church people are saying, a lot of Westerners are not, well, they're not into all this asupri supri, you know, touched up and anointed kind of a thing. If for, let me say by mistake, let me use that word mistake, you know what I mean? She now got married to, let's say, a westerner and she tells a westerner how at the age of 20 such a such a pastor did this that 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 even in in 20 years time a court in canada where she lives can drag Suleiman from nigeria to canada i'm telling you go on if you doubt me ask prince uh, andrew Prince andrew had whatever with a girl in uh, in in america many 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 years ago i think about 20 or whatever many years ago now prince andrew a whole prince of england was being dragged to court in america Eventually, he paid out. The girl got justice. They ended up settling out of court. About 20 million pounds or something like that that they had to settle. It takes knowing the right people, the right thing to do. I do not believe that Otobo has the right whatever. Okay? But she has enough stubbornness to last this thing a lifetime. Coming to people and saying, Oh, now I believe her. Now that more and more stories have come out, I believe her, blah, blah, blah. I made a video when this story was new. And I said at me, I believe her. Then I believed her. Today I still believe her story. Personally, I believe her story. That was how many years ago? And then when she came out to apologize, I, I made a video to say, I do not believe that apology. And then now she's coming out. There's nothing she's saying now that is shocking to me because I knew from day one her mother going to apologize, her whatever, all of those, she going to apologize. She has come out now. She has narrated the story about how they did everything. Suleiman and his team, <laughs> they did everything to get her to apologize. And they promised her whatever millions of naira. 20 million naira. I can't remember. She mentioned all of that. She just said at that point, eh, she didn't even say, she said she could have said, pay me first before I go and uh, uh, apologize in the church. She said, you know what? Let them just do. Let me just move on with my life. She went there. She said the convoy that was sent to follow her to go and apologize in that church, that it was middle night. Night, they dragged that. We didn't even know. That was during a night service. 
She said they took her there. She said before she entered, she said to herself, so I'm going to a church to go and lie. She then said, before I will go into that church to go and tell this lie, I want to see Suleiman. The man took her upstairs to where he was. And she said to him, so you want me to go there and lie? From what she said, Suleiman said yes. And she went there. They even his wife, Suleiman's wife, was involved in the whole thing. According to which she narrated the story. And then she went there and she said, this is acting. There was one place she was telling the guy that, ah, this one, the guy that they were sending to Frank Shaibu. She was saying, I have to act it, I have to be convincing. She had um, her phone. She said she had her phone to record them secretly because they took her things off her. Even her computer because they were afraid she would, she would record them. The people that were working for Suleiman, and she, they were discussing with her what she should say, what she should not say. She has the audio is out. She said she went there and she had to do all of those things. Those are the things that they dis were discussed that she should say. As she finished the confer, the so-called apology, boom, they zoomed her off and they put her the next available flight to back to Canada. Now, when she reached Canada, she knows say the money they said they were going to give her, they didn't give her the money. But she said she just started to, she wanted to move on because at the end of the day, she was really desperate for the money. She could have said, pay me first before I may mean, I do the apology. She said, but I wanted to, this to be over because it was too stressful. Now, another area I want to discuss, you see, when it comes to stories like this, there were people that were for example, Sahara reporter took it upon themselves to spread the news and expose this story and all of that. There was a place where they got her to, to now say that uh, Sahara reporters are lying, that uh, they, they, whatever she was saying, she basically flipped it around on Sahara reporters. And now, that's one thing that came to my mind. After what she did, we, now we understand her, we understand her story that she was desperate, whatever, she wanted to get out of the Wahala, whatever they tell her to do, she will just do it. After she said that about Sahara reporters, don't think that Sahara reporters today will be in a hurry to want to share her story again. You get my point? They will not be in a hurry to want to share her story again. If you guys don't know, that is why to today, to the man, he, he does not, uh, he does not like that uh, show already. Because now they didn't help that time. Now they didn't help that they exposed the whole Otobo story. Because Otobo was locked up until the news started coming out. They helped share her news. And then the eyes of the whole country knew that there was a girl called Otobo. There was this story happening with Suleiman Saga. Uh, I was pregnant. My baby was removed. Blah, blah, blah. They helped share that story. So I'm saying this. We know that she has explained her whole story about how she did all of that. But the truth is this. Don't blame, for example, today. Don't blame Sahara reporters if they decide not to get involved. Because if somebody that they were helping before could turn around and say this. We understand she was trying to save her head. But I'm just still saying that they too, at this moment, will be like, okay. They can decide that they don't want to get involved in that story that is that aspect another area that i want to speak about is when people say hey what was she thinking she was dating a married man but that that is wrong i said it in that video as at that time that is wrong but i always say it there's a difference between a sin and a crime having a relationship with a married man is absolutely wrong morally wrong it is against what our christianity teaches but is it a crime it is not a crime so you cannot Yes, you cannot lock somebody up for a sin that is not a crime. So let's not forget that. But the allegation of somebody removing of Suleiman, according to her, she said Suleiman removed her pregnancy. That is a crime. The bullying, locking her up, the illegal detention, that is a crime. The bullying and intimidation that she has explained she has been through, they are all crimes. If you give too much information, some of our people get easily lost. That's why I try to break it down. My video is not about saying Stephanie Tobo is a saint. No. My video is about exposing the evils that Suleiman has been accused of. In a civilized society, somebody like him, he, is in the, he will be in big trouble. Do you know something else? You see, that's the area of our country. That's why some people like the way that the country is jaga jaga like this because that's why they can get away with all this mess. In a civilized society, when Stephanie Tobo came out and said, Oh, you know, it was some big politicians that got me into this. Some powerful politicians. Do you know in a civilized society, if a powerful politicians got you to lie about a pastor, it will be investigated, it will be taken over by the authorities because those politicians need to be exposed. Stephen Otobo will be forced to come and reveal the so-called powerful politicians because that's what she, she eventually said. Everything I said was a lie. It was some powerful politicians that set me up for it. In a civilized society, she will be held. You have to list, you cannot just say powerful politicians. You have to bring them out because they have committed a crime. And that time she would have been stuck. One thing, eh, those that may still be doubting these girl stories, when she shares the story of her Suleiman and Suleiman's workers, she will tell you their name. Frank Shaibu, this person. She's bringing out their names like this. And then when she said powerful, politi powerful politicians, she didn't even mention a single name. She just said powerful politicians. She knows too many people around Suleiman's circle. 
and the stories i don't know how many of you may have watched you know may have watched the video somebody confirmed that the amount that Stephanie Otobo said that they collected, they said they collected an offering and they brought it to the hotel room. She said she was in that hotel room. Brought it to the man, so the man took all the money and gave to her. And she mentioned the amount. Somebody called in that show and said that amount she mentioned is correct. Because of the people that went to deliver that money were able to confirm that that is exactly the amount. If Otobo's story is not true, how come that she mentioned the amount and somebody else could confirm it? Like I said, it takes uh, Otobo meeting the right person and this story will be dug up. You know why I like Western society? You see the hotel she's mentioning, they can bring out their CCTV video of many, many years past. They can investigate it and see there are street cameras in Western society. They will show and it will show whatever she said, we went to here, I went into this hotel, he came out later and all of those, they, all of those things. You remember that time this girl said, he said, my passport, it was stamped. We traveled to so-and-so place. Let him bring his passport. You know, in Nigeria, you cannot force him. You know, Boro Ibo, you can be forced to bring out your passport to confirm these stories. My video is everywhere, but I'm going to bring out all the points I want to bring out. The area that is going to be, especially in Nigerian society, difficult for people to look beyond an individual and look at the actions or activities that are being reported. You see, Suleiman is a anointed man of God. Uh, da, da, da. That is the name he carries. And then Otobu, if you look at the way she presents herself, I'm just speaking now about the way people look at people. And whether we like it or not, people are going to be biased when it comes to your appearance. You know, the way she dresses. Take your time and listen to what I'm saying. The way she dresses and like some of her um, social media posts where she's dancing, kind of, a, uh, you know, some kind of a sexual dance and all of those things. Unfortunately, whether we agree or not, we live in a world where people would always want to address you according to the way you dress. People will always look at the external package. Look at this girl that was fighting for justice, uh, justice against uh, Prince Andrew of the UK. This girl, if you see that time, if you, the picture she showed of her and Andrew, you see the way she was dressed that time. When she was coming to court, if you see the way she's dressing, you see the way she's dressing very responsibly. Because you see, even in America, you find that a murderer, one big case or the other, a lot of these big, big cases, you will see prostitute or criminal, whatever. When they have a court case, they will wear their best Sunday clothes. They will dress like responsible, responsible members of society. I put that word responsible because some people may dress amazingly, but they are evil on the inside. What I'm saying this is when it comes to this idea of fighting for justice, and they say, oh, this pastor did this, did that. So people be like, eh, he did this. Where is the guy he did it to? They now show. People are like, oh, there is, unfortunately, I'm using that word unfortunately, there is this thing about people feeling like, Somebody is not worth it just because of the way they look. You understand? People just judge them. There's a recent case now of a police officer in, uh, in the US that I saw that this guy, tall, handsome guy, and he will stop women for offenses they did not commit or maybe they did. But before he will let them go, he will say, he will ask them for favors, if you know what I mean. Favors, sexual. If they give it to him, he will let them go. Even if they didn't uh, commit any crime, there was one lady that said she didn't do anything wrong, but she was just walking. He just stopped her and said, uh, and the next time, I took her to an uncompleted uh, building or whatever, abandoned school or whatever, and he did what he did to her. She said she did not complain because she does not want to, because she has other issues, like she has other pending court issues. Or Unfortunately for him, let me come back to this area of how people appear. He now did it to a, a woman that was in her 60s, a grandmother for that matter. Accused her whatever, the next thing, he was asking her for favors so he can let her go. She did it because she was afraid he was going to delete her. So she did it. But she went straight away and reported to the police. And then when they brought out all the ladies he has done this to, they were black women. There were nobodies. Because the people are going to say, ah, uh -uh, how can a handsome boy like this, even if you want to have these women? So people have that strategy that if I want to do this, I will do it so that I will not be believable. Because there is something in our minds about the low people in society prostitutes or black black woman that is not even that that black woman that's not even like a queen she's not even like amazing looking she's not even how what would oh so people look at look at them and feel like they are nobodies their lives do not matter whatever happened to them forget about it i'm just using this to speak about the idea of justice for people unfortunately we live in a world that will address you according to the way you are dressed that's why there's a saying that dress the way you would like to be addressed I believe in forget about what people look like people look like this or like that does not mean that they don't deserve justice or they don't deserve to be treated right I made a video which I was explaining I don't know which video is gonna go first but I was speaking about how for example you don't ever see me make videos about Bobriski or whatever 
He's not my cup of tea. But then when somebody beats him up on the street, if this person hit his car and then he brought out his phone or whatever, he was filming this person or whatever, and the person got angry, beat him up and smashed his phone. And I said, no, that person had no right to smash his phone. Am I a fan of a biscuit? No. But I still spoke the truth because that is the truth. The same thing with this girl. People may say, oh, she doesn't dress well, she doesn't this, she doesn't. Unfortunately, human beings are like that. There are some people that are not fans of Suleiman. They believe her story and they feel like, all oh, these things Suleiman is accused of is a lot of misinvestigation, blah, blah, blah. But then when you look at Stephanie Tobo, the way she dresses, that they, they just conclude that she's not what it was, Jerry. And don't forget that when this girl first came out and she started sharing her story, one of the things Suleiman said, he said, even if I want to, he said she's a stripper because he knows that once he says that, people could just count her out. He made the video say, even if I see them in the market, I will not buy from them. The same thing I'm talking about that police officer. There are some people that they choose their victims carefully. And then people look and say, oh, Suleiman, anointed man of God. Somebody left to come at the radio and I was saying, anointed man of God. I said, did God tell you that he anointed Suleiman? How, how did you know? How, what makes you believe that God anointed Suleiman? I personally don't believe God anointed Suleiman. Suleiman, am I lying? Did God anoint you? The Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them. Look at the fruit of Suleiman. I'm telling you, you think God anointed this man. Forget that matter. Forget that matter. Anyways, the bottom line is this. I do not believe Otobo is going away. Like I said, till tomorrow, all these allegations against Suleiman, she was the only one that was stubborn enough to bring her story up. And like I said, till the day Suleiman leaves this world, whenever his name is mentioned, Otobo is in people's minds. Till the day Otobo's name has been immortalized alongside with his name. And like I said at the beginning of this video, Otobo has enough stubbornness. I was even surprised to know that she was only 20 years old when this whole thing started. And a man at his age dragged this girl into the court system with all the money he's making, fight and offering, whatever. Drag this girl. It is not an equal fight. I'm not saying Otobo is a saint, but I'm telling you that Suleiman is not a saint. Suleiman will always have to deal with this girl until this girl gets justice, whatever her definition of justice is. Oh, fortunately for Suleiman, Otobo is not a problem that's going away. This girl has enough determination to last her lifetime. She may go, she'll be back again. She'll be gone until she gets justice. I do not believe she's ever going to walk away from this story. And like I said, if this girl meets the right person, for example, she, let's say she got married to someone that is educated, to, you know, someone, someone that has West, Western mentality. Why I use that word Western mentality? Because our people to do this, they touch not my and all this, blah, blah, blah. Or marry a Westerner. Oh, by mistake, she married the Westerner. This story will be dug up again and again and again. Anyways, I saw the video that she is back and I wanted to quickly come and address it. Just to put it out there that I have seen it because the way she spoke passionately then, the girl is still very solid when she's speaking about the issues. That's how I feel about this story and about her comeback. As always, whatever your opinions are, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.